take it. What we have in mind for you isn't on your dream sheet, and you've probably never even heard of this assignment. The words of the assignment officer from the Pentagon rang heavy in my cell phone as I was about to hear where my next stop on my active duty Air Force legal career would lead me. An ominous moment. This would not be my first move. The Air Force had sent me to Charlottesville, Spokane, Washington, D.C., Tokyo, San Antonio. Before that, I had been in law school in Nashville. I had been an undergrad in Houston. And as a young boy in Pittsburgh, I had patrolled Three River Stadium with youthful Barry Bonds and Andy Van Slyke. Uh, but I had an expectation of where I was going to go. I was in an international law program where usually people went overseas. And in fact, the other four people in the program for the Air Force all wound up going to England and Germany and the Republic of Korea and Turkey. But where would I go? So I was kind of nonplussed when the voice said, you're headed to the National Air and Space Intelligence Center at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base. I had never heard of it, for good reason. There had only been two other people who had been in the job before me, and they had both been significantly senior to me, so had no idea who they were, but basic it would be. Dayton, on the other hand, I, I, I had heard of it. I'm a music fan, you know that all those Guided by Voices songs had hatched in Dayton. As an Air Force officer, you knew that flight had come from Dayton. And as someone who had paid attention to current events when I was in college, you knew that there had been a big peace treaty in Dayton. But what was it like to live in Dayton? I really had no idea. But I liked the idea of living in urban neighborhoods in D.C. and in Spokane. That had gone well. But there were discouraging words. A friend of my sister's who had lived in the area posted this on my Facebook wall as I was house hunting, referring to this area as the armpit of the universe, and cautioning me not to buy a house. But I wanted to buy a house. I looked at the what I could find online, looked at the data, this cool little neighborhood that boasted where neighbors become friends, houses with character and a friendly community. I knew people like David Ezrati would live there and that it would be beautiful. So I bought a house in South Park and took the plunge. And when I got there, I discovered a neighborhood of people who were very actively involved in making things better and having a good, cohesive neighborhood. And so I became very involved with the Neighborhood Association. I actually ran the meetings there for a couple of years, developed a community garden, uh, we did security patrol work, and supported local businesses in the neighborhood. So the neighborhood was cool, but what about the rest of Dayton? I remember going for a run my first weekend here downtown, and it seemed like there were just a bunch of abandoned buildings, like something had gone on here before, but what was going on now? Why was that shopping cart up on that concrete beam? What's up with that? So I branched out. I hate the term young professionals because I think it's too exclusionary, and I hate young creatives more because I think it's exclusionary and overly precious. But those groups, getting involved in them, groups like Encore and Up Dayton and, and Dayton Young Classics, really provided a lot of access to the area and access to the arts. But I wasn't going to experience the arts here just passively. Uh, we had a Shakespeare play in my neighborhood. I went out for it. I never had a role in a play before. But once I, I did that, I wound up uh, getting roles all the time in plays. I was in seven plays here, six of them Shakespeare, Springfield, Xenia, Dayton. It really opened up this great area of my life. Also opening up was running. I was a two, I was a running marathon, full marathon every other year guy. I was going to run the 2010 Air Force Marathon. It was too hot that summer to run for more than 14 miles of a stretch. So I went out and I ran it, and then I was like, hey, you don't have to do long runs to run marathons. So I wound up running 10 marathons in three years here, and uh, knocked 40 minutes off my PR. This shows, when you're, you're here, you, you learn things as you go along. They're not all evident at first. Year one, it was that the Second Street Market's the place to go on Saturdays. Year two, it's that if Chris Shea is in it, you should go see it. And year three, it's if I want to knock some time off of my, uh, my running go to Drake's gym. This was a weekend, humble weekend, late in February around here that was totally brilliant. You had PK night. You had, you had an, a neighborhood outing at the tavern. You had DCDC. And you had the, the last Waltz tribute. This was not, these were not the actions of a dying community. This was, these were people, these people here, who actively could go out and make their own fun. And that's really just been such a great 
thrilled for my, my time here. I mean, lots of friends, South Park and otherwise. People who are total strangers but have made this experience great. And for my own part, what I would do would be throw house parties at my home every few months, inviting everyone I knew, military or townie, over to my home. The one in the middle here was the last one that I had, January 5th. We had at least 117 people in my home over nine hours, building community, singing karaoke. It was, it was just a tremendously beautiful experience. Last week, I went out for a run towards downtown, and where previously I'd seen all these unwelcoming buildings, here I saw, I saw promise. You know, I, I saw some unfavorable things, but they look more like data points than trend lines. You know, you saw fully actualized baseball palaces and all sorts of other great things. And yeah, I, you know, I was here to do work with the Air Force, and so I, I, I can't really tell you because it's classified or covered by attorney-client privilege, but it all went well enough so that I was selected for promotion to Lieutenant Colonel, and I pinned on earlier this month. But, however, that means a move, and so next month I will be going to an assignment in the Middle East. Land of uh, swimming pools and movie stars, or at least Janet Jackson, who married someone from this community. And, well, it's a great opportunity. It also makes me sad to leave all this after a short amount of time because you don't usually see people enjoying places and then leaving after a short amount of time. I quote at the end, uh, Bill Simmons is a sports writer who likes to compare uh, athletes with pop, pop culture figures. When he was writing about Bill Walton and his brilliance as a young player, he, he compared him with the rapper Tupac Shakur, and he said, that's how I feel about Walton and the Trailblazers. They didn't roll for long, but they roll. And I don't need to rewind the tape to picture it. And I'll tell you, I feel exactly the same way about my three years in Dayton. Thank you very much. Very well said. That's all that needs to be said. Thank you very much. Um, rightfully, that was our last speaker. Uh, I hit the bite, so I'm going to let Matt come back.